Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Glyph Chess. Glyph Chess is brought to you by Blue Piper Game Studio. It's for two to three players if you have the expansion, and it's for ages eight and up. Game times range anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. Glyph Chess is a chessboard style game. Now, this game is based on a comp Chinese comic book, Tales of Tarsalia, and only the most powerful of magic users in this world can play this game. And it's up to you to maneuver your pieces in order to get your scepter to the center of the board first or eliminate all your opponent's scepters and win the day. Now, setup of this game is pretty straightforward. We'll take a quick overview look at it. And first thing you'll note that each side has their own set of pieces. And in a two player game, you have the silver and the gold. If you have the expansion, they're a set of blue pieces, or aqua, I guess. And they all match. You all have the same type of characters, basically, in this game. However, what's neat is that you have a set of glyph cards that you're going to be shuffling up and dealing out to yourself and showing how these pieces come out on the board. And now they all start on the edge, of course. In a two-player game, you're across from each other. Three-player, it's a little different. But uh, the scepter piece will always go in the middle on your side of the board with your pieces um, defined by how the cards were drawn. And of course, each side also has their own set of coins, which you'll be using to invoke magical spells and things of that nature, along with dice that are pool dice, that everyone can tap into these dice on their turn. So you'll roll those to start the game as well. And typically the player who is gold will be their first player to go. Each player receives two stands to put their six glyph cards on. Now, these are just really handy to keep the cards upright and in front of you at all times. And then this player who goes second will draw a random glyph coin from their bag and put it behind these stands to start the game. Each player's turn is divided into three phases. You have the awakening phase, you have the action phase, and then finally reset. And again, in the setup phase, you will have rolled these, the first player will have rolled all these dice. And what's cool too, I didn't mention before, is that the dice tower does come with the game. You assemble it, and uh, this is a pretty neat little central piece uh, to go along with this beautiful, beautiful game. All right, let's take a look at the awakening step, the first step in your turn. Now, you'll notice that all the dice have glyph symbols on them that match the glyph symbols on your cards and match your figures on the board. And what you're looking for, the first thing you're checking is to see if any of the dice match any of the uh, figures, uh, glyphs that have been either killed or incinerated. And if they do match any of those, uh, from your side of the board, then you can take those collective dice and re-roll them once, but only once. And then you check to see if you have five coins in front of you that have been drawn from your bag, maybe in previous rounds and so forth. But if you have less than five, then you get to draw a coin. The next step in your turn is the action phase. And really this is the meat of the game. And you have two options here, you have A or B, it's not both. So either you're gonna move a piece or you're going to use some of its special magical abilities and things. But moving is simply looking for a matching glyph. So if you're using the force mage, you're looking for its matching symbol on the dice and in coins in front of you. And you can mix and match those two different things in order to move that particular piece that many spots. So in like the force mage, if you had two dice and one coin, you can move the force mage three spaces. And so your second option here is to cast a spell. And again, just like with moving, you're gonna be looking for those specific glyphs that will help you do this. And each character, their card will outline at the bottom what their different abilities and magic skills are. So you be mindful in how to put those things together um, to, in order to manipulate your scepter to the middle of the board or to take out your opponent's scepter. But just know that there's a lot of different things you can do here, and there is a difference between being incinerated versus killed. Killed, you might be able to be revived, bring back a piece to the board. However, if you're incinerated, that piece is eliminated from the board completely. And now, if you have a coin in front of you that was that particular piece that is incinerated, then you flip the coin over and it becomes a wild and can be used for any piece on your board as a wild glyph symbol. And of course, 
your goal here, like I said, is to eliminate pieces. And when you do that, it's not pieces that you move through get eliminated, but it's more uh, a piece that you land on. Your last movement will land, will eliminate the piece or kill the piece. Um, and of course, again, those magic spells are gonna do even more potential damage based on which figure or which character is uh, being invoked at that time. And then the final step of your turn is to check for coins that have been used. If coins have been used, then you'll push them off to the side into a used coin pile. And any dice that you use this turn will then be re-rolled and readied for the next player. And so that's really the basics of the game. That's how you play. Now, obviously, all these different um, figures on the board have very, very different abilities and different things they can do. So let's take a look at a couple of them, but we'll try to briefly go over some of the different things they do. And I'll show you some diagrams on kind of how they move. There's some really handy stuff in the, in the rule book really outlining how these pieces work and move. And, but again, it's all about putting together those combos and how you can manipulate pieces to use magic spells and move them across the board. First, we're gonna take a look at the scepter. And the scepter only has a passive ability, basically, and it's just movement. And you can use any glyph dice or any glyph coin to move the scepter. However, the scepter can only move one space per turn. Okay, it's important to note too that as you're looking at these different figures, you have passive abilities or passive spells and you have got active and master spells and potentially they might kind of work together or they are going to be separate and require different things like coins versus dice and so forth. So it's just gonna depend on the character that you're working with. And if you look at the seer first, she has a passive ability that in line of sight, you cannot use glyph coins for that figure that she can see. And she also has the ability to force you to discard two glyph coins, which is pretty bad, if she can activate that spell. Now, the illusionist is all about illusion, right? So the illusionist is going to either make duplicates of himself or potentially swap positions with another player. And then we have my two favorite characters on the board, which is the elementalist and the force mage the powerhouses. The elementalist is about, all about incineration. So when it takes out a piece, that piece is gone and cannot be revived uh, throughout the game. So, but it also has its master ability to change direction as it moves, which is pretty handy. And then the force mage is truly, oh man, it's super powerful. It has the ability to move to a spot and then take out everything adjacent to it. And then finally, we have the Necromancer and the Summoner. Necromancer is just like what you would think, all about bringing pieces back. That's its special master ability. But it also has the ability to spend a coin when it is attacked and actually not be killed or destroyed or even incinerated. It can move to the spot where the enemy piece started. So those are some pretty handy things the Necromancer can do. And then the Summoner is really all about summoning those mini minions and bringing them out on the board in order to use them as they move across or attack other figures on the board. And it really, it's crucial for the summoner to stay put because uh, otherwise the minions will disappear from the board. So that's a brief overview of how all the different pieces kind of work. And what's handy that each of the cards outline that for you as well as you're playing so you can determine what the master spells are, what the passive abilities are, and, so, and the active spells. And of course the glyph symbols at the top will show you and remind you which pieces use which glyphs and so forth, which is really handy as well. And then of course when pieces are removed from the board you'll take your card and flip it around so you know it's no longer available. And it's again it's all about the scepters. Whoever gets their scepter to the middle or Whoever has the last scepter standing will win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now that said, as you can see, this game is incredibly beautiful. I mean, it is a, a piece that I would put out on my table, just leave out because it looks so incredible. And I like the fact that you have a three player version. I haven't really dived into that yet, but the two player was really interesting. I like how the different spells work and a lot of choices there to be made based on what characters are available. And there is a bit of luck, right? Because there's dice you're manipulating and there's random coin pulls from the bag. So ultimately folks though, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, 
We'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.